he has, has come up with a new theory, but he's still in the morning of his life. He's still developing something because he's not in this inner world. Transition's difficult. Transition's difficult. We break down all of our old habits, our structures, our old mask, our old personalities, our pleasers. Probably none of you were a pleaser. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. Or a perfectionist. I've no. never been a perfectionist. <laughs> But it would be nice. <laughs> yeah. All of those uh, personalities, the many personalities. So there's a season to everything, like Ecclesiastes says. To everything there's a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. And that was made into a song, remember? Yeah. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And there's a right time for the cocoon soul to emerge. Yes. Have you watched a butterfly as it emerges out of the cocoon? kids I used to have in kindergarten one to help it. You can't help it. Why is your cripple just like the little chickens? You see a crack in the egg, you want to help it. No, we have to go through that process too. Sometimes we have to go through that process of suffering. And the biggest thing about that process is forgiveness. We can't move on at the soul level until we completely forgive yeah. that go. Yeah. Not just of others, but of ourselves. And for me, the biggest forgiveness comes right back here. But when I forgive others, I get it back. It projects back. Yeah. And I'm easy, it's easier to forgive me. So uh, that butterfly comes out and it's wet, and it pumps its wings, and you don't dare try to help it. And it needs time, and its first flight is not very, very elegant looking. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes when we move on to that afternoon stage of checking within us for the kingdom of heaven, within our consciousness. It's not always easy, is it? It's not always easy, but it grows on us. It's like an onion. You take one peeling off at a time, one peeling off at a time, and at the core is the real self. Lo there, lo here, the kingdom of heaven is within this consciousness. <clears throat> And it's in all nature. Yes. And so um, I love the little book that they have over here on the five principles. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to share a little of that. The law of allowing is in that book. It's being creatively engaged to a life with value and purpose. To live the truth may not require physical action, only metaphysical, which is more powerful. Can you hear me? I can't tell now anymore. Okay, so it says that this energy shift always precedes physical changes. The fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 was the result of a shift in collective consciousness. In 1989 and before that, there was a wall over there when we bought this building. And you remember Sue and some 
we only have a few old timers back. <laughs> and yes. we were told that that wall couldn't come down. That's right. Mm -hmm. And we had this young architect, Steve, mm -hmm. that came in and he said, sure, you can take that wall down. That's right. It's a freestanding wall. And we could only get like 20 people. It wasn't even out this far. We could only get about 20 people in the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. And that was about the same time that the Berlin Wall came down. Oh, oh, that's, right. oh. I, that's the only way I, because I don't remember dates that well. Of course, this place is very beautiful now, yes. thanks to all the people that have been here and decorated and taken care of it. But that was the same time. This energy shift precedes the physical changes. <clears throat> and the green movement to save the environment is the result of collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And before that, what was that big movement we had where everybody prayed at a certain time? Right. That was, what was that called? Harmony? Um, Harmonic. Say it loud. The Harmon Harmonic Convergence. That was oh, it. Yeah. Harmonia. Yeah, I was over in India at that time. Wow. Yeah, there was, there was a, when enough people begin to think a certain way, when we reach a tipping point in awareness, then outward physical things begin to happen. Do any of you remember that old book called The Hundredth Monkey? Yes. Yeah. You do? Who remembers The Hundredth Monkey? Oh, great. <coughs> remember that when one monkey opened a coconut on a rock, all the monkeys everywhere knew to open a coconut on a rock no matter how far away they were. Mm. That's the collective consciousness. Yes. And so each of us have a part to do. People come in all the time and they, they say, how can you believe that? Don't you read the papers? Don't you watch television? This is a cruel world. Don't you know all the perpetrator traders? Perpetrators? <laughs> Don't you know what's going on out there? And I have to keep remembering the world changes. I see, if I see the world as it is, I make it worse. Mm -hmm. Yes. If I see the world as I am and change my consciousness, yes, yes. I make it what it can be. Yes. Goethe said, if you take a man as he is, you make him worse. Mm. If you take a man as he can be, you'll make him what he will be. Yeah. It's the same for our world. Women, too, are included in that. So when enough people think a certain way, and that's why I'm speaking today. That's the only way, the reason I get around anymore uh, to speak is because I feel that all of us are at that hundredth monkey place. There's a change going on, a shift going on, and it's time that we all fly. And somebody's calling to let us know that. <laughs> so when beliefs and attitudes, I think her name's Ed Park, the author, when they're held by nearly everyone, they inevitably erupt into the physical world. Just as a volcano releases the pent-up energy below the Earth's surface. And so it's when we have the metaphysical, it's stronger and more powerful than the physical. Rumi said, why crawl when you can fly? a new aspect of ourselves when we make this decision, when we have this intention and we allow that part of us that's a supreme part of us, that I amness, yes. that is always us, when we allow that to be the boss 
and get our little nothingness out of the way and let the divine circuit take over, like Emerson says. Get your bloated nothingness out of the way and let the divine circuit take over, surely. I say that to myself when I get my littleness going. Yes, that's my affirmation. And so a new aspect of ourself pushes its way up into the light. And we get lots of reactions from others because we've changed. We're not that caterpillar anymore. We're a butterfly. And we're going to have reactions. All you have to do is go to an AA meeting and listen. Yes, they, when you change for the better, it's not always easy. That's right. It's not always easy. You have to rely more and more on that inner, that inner strength, that I amness. Yes. So hope for the flowers is cooperation in nature. We're not going to have any flowers if we don't have any butterflies. If they keep eating and eating as cocoons and getting fatter and fatter and don't transform. What about the bees? We read almost every day about the bees, don't we? And so when we see something that needs done, Emma Curtis Hopkins, one of our giants in the New Thought Movement said, if you see something that needs to be done, chances are you're the one to do it. It doesn't seem to work all the time at my books do. But that's our service, isn't it? That's why we're in service now, and Celia has brought this out. If I see something that needs done, chances are I'm the one to do it. And so uh, giving is receiving. Nature abhors a vacuum. And as I give, as I let go, as I let go, so does my whole essence come forth, my soul. Nothing in nature lives for itself. Rivers don't drink their own water. Trees don't eat their own fruit. The sun doesn't shine for itself. A flower's fragrance is not for itself. Living for each other is the rule of nature. Now, I've had lots of, of uh, pairs of wings and um, I've had many cocoons, but as old as I am, I can still give. And I just really want to um, uh, tell all of you that have stuck in here at Unity, those of you that are serving, um, how wonderful it is that you've taken this, um, this challenge and filled it. And I'll end with this. Spiritual transformation is realizing more of our inner Christ nature. It's discovering our soul and letting Christ be born from a waiting heart. And Dr. Holmes said at a sermon by the sea, find me one person who knows how to talk to God, really. And I shall walk through the woods, and everything that seems inanimate will respond. The leaves of the trees will clap their hands, the grass will grow soft under him. Because we're meant to fly. We're meant to shift gears now in our whole universe and make a difference in humanity. Yes. And God bless you. Thank yes. you for asking me.